So today I'm going to talk about brushes that are my favorite that I absolutely cannot live without. I've had a few requests to talk about them. Uh, I've collected quite a few along the course of my makeup journey and there are definitely staples that I use every single day that I would not be able to apply my makeup without. So my number one absolute favorite would be the Sigma F80 brush. Now this one's getting a little bit raggedy uh, because I've had it for two years and I've been using it almost every time I apply my makeup, which is a lot. But considering that I've used it so much, I mean it's still looking pretty good, but I am starting to lose like quite a few hairs on the side. It's time I think for me to get a new one so this one doesn't die soon. Uh, but this one is so good. The foundation looks flawless, looks so well blended when using this. This would be my number one absolute favorite and I do recommend this to everyone. Um, if this one's dirty, I will go ahead and use the, this is a hair, make, hair makeup addictions and it's called the finisher and it's a very similar style as you can tell, but this one is not as dense. It's a little bit more fluffy, but it does a really good job. Like they're pretty comparable. So next would be contouring. For contouring, MAC 109. I actually got this, uh, the idea for using this brush, I had this brush before and I used it with the Dior Air Flash foundation. I would spray it on because it's like a mini kabuki and I would just apply like that. It's perfect. It works really well as a foundation brush in that sense. And I did also use this for powder foundation years ago, like five years ago. That's, I mean, I've had this brush for probably eight years and it is still in such good condition. That's the thing with MAC brushes. If you buy a MAC brush and you take good care of it, it will probably last you 20 years and I kid you not. Like, this brush has a lot of life left and I mean, sure, a few hairs shed here and there, but I wash it regularly, I take good care of it, and it is a powerhouse. So this one I use for contouring and I got the idea to use it for contouring from Lisa Eldridge. She's um, an English makeup artist celebrity, a celebrity makeup artist. Um, and this one blends so much better than like any other brush that I've ever used. So you don't get that snicker bar look. So it's just, it's so nice. It's round. It blends everything out so well. Number one brush. My other brush that I use for contouring is a Real Techniques contour brush. This came as part of a set. I don't remember what the set is. My husband got it for me for Christmas, but this does provide a more precise contour. And if I do use this, I'll go in with the MAC 109 and just blend things out afterwards because sometimes I find that this is just too harsh. Like, it's just too much of a thick line. But I do use these interchangeably, and these are my two go-to contour brushes. I only have one absolutely favorite blush brush, and it's the Makeup Addictions The Blusher. Now, I just find that this is, like, a perfect size. It's not too big. It's not too small, it's fluffy, it's not too dense, but it's not too fluffy. It is my favorite. Like, I need, I keep telling myself that I need to keep buying these. This came as a set. Um, it, it was a six-piece set, I think. Uh, it came with, um, like, this one. It came with this one, like a pencil brush. Um, like a few other, like a mini kabuki brush. There, there's quite a few in there. Um, but this is like amazing. Um, it, this uh, brand is a UK English brand. So, but the prices aren't really that bad. I mean, take the currency conversion for Canadian. It's going to be a little bit more, I think, than it would be in American. But it is such a great company. They're usually having discounts and free worldwide shipping all the time. Uh, and yeah, like so good. I absolutely love, love, love. This is my favorite and I wish I had like 10 of them because I, you know, different shades of different blushes, but this is my absolutely go-to. Like I love this brush so much. It's perfect. So next, uh, for highlight, this is a Morphe fan brush. And honestly, like there really isn't a whole lot special about this brush. These are actually the first fan brushes that I got. Um, I got two because I bought two Morphe brush sets. Um, from what I've seen, I haven't brought brush brushes, brushes, brushes from Morphe in about three years. And I went on there the other day to see if they had the same set that I bought. And I'm kind of disappointed to say that their prices have gone up quite a bit. I mean, I'm sure the quality has gone up too, but I was just shocked because years ago, you never saw a brush set over $50. And now it's from like $50 to like $200. I was really surprised. Um, 
and the variety. They don't have as much variety as they used to. So, I mean, I understand you grow as a company, so you want your quality to get better. Unfortunately, that usually means that your prices go up too. Uh, but I'm quite glad that I got brushes when I did because I got two sets and I think it was like $30 and I got probably over 60 brushes. And I use them religiously every day and especially I use them when I'm going and doing makeup on other people. But I got two fan brushes and they're the only brand that I have of fan brushes and they work perfect. They're really great for highlight. When I first got fan brushes, I was like, what do you use these for? And then I just kind of learned that they were really good for highlighting and it's just like, it just gets this area perfect right here. So moving on to eye brushes, there's a few staples. Now this one looks blue because I use that to apply the eyeshadow that I'm wearing right now, but this is the MAC 239. This is like, it's a perfect square shader brush. It is, I've had this brush since 2007, eight years. It is still going strong. So my friends, when I tell you that MAC brushes will stand the test of time, it is true. My other eyeshadow brush that I really love is the Sigma Performance Shader E56. This one, it's a very different shape, but this is perfect if you're gonna do a cut crease and you really need to get like good lines, like right here, perfect. Uh, for blending, MAC 217, best blending brush of life. Now a lot of people compare the E Sigma Blending E25 to the MAC 217, but honestly, in my opinion, they don't compare. The 217, by far is so much better in my opinion than the E25. Like I will sometimes the E25 and I'm like, no, it's hard. edges are too harsh. I will go with the 217. Perfection. Um, I usually use a Sigma E25 for crease shadow. I have two of these. I got them as gifts when I bought a brush off of Amazon or something. Um, and these are, they are really handy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love these. I just, if I could choose one, I would pick the 217 and I would have 3,000 of those and maybe like a thousand of these. Um, they are perfect. I have them in the travel size, but they are a really good option and they are slightly cheaper than the MAC 217. Next for eyeliner, I really like to use the Sigma Precision Eyeliner in E11. I use this in my eyeliner tutorial video. It's really thin and it's perfect. Like it really gets those small like precise lines. Um, I usually use a liquid liner after, but I do like if I'm in a rush and I really only have time to use um, a cream eyeliner, I will use this. This is a Makeup Addictions and it's called The Detailer. I always, it's like a perfect little dense shaped um, pencil brush and I use this for the inner corner highlight and I will also use it for under the eye like this area right here under the lid. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite brushes use it pretty much every single day. Uh, highly recommend Makeup Addictions. It's very, very dense. It's much denser than the Sigma one. And in fact, the Sigma one, like after you use it for a little while, it doesn't really look like a pencil brush. I mean, if you look at the two of them, I don't know, I mean, I guess. But this one is a lot denser than the Sigma. For eyebrows, this is a Morphe brush. And it is really, really thin and it's really dense. It, it Because it is thin and dense, it gets really, really precise lines. Now I will use this one and I will interchange with the Makeup Addictions, uh, the liner brush, because the Makeup Addictions one is a little bit fluffier. So if you want a more natural looking brow without the harsh lines, I will use the Makeup Addictions pencil brush. But lately I've really been loving this Morphe brush. You can get a similar brush at MAC, Sigma, and all you wanna look for is just like a liner, eyebrow pencil brush, um, best, in my opinion, it's best, like if I were to go shopping for another one, I would just go and feel it because that's how I can tell how dense it is. But to start off with, if you're starting, you know, with, I never use these for liners, never. I don't know why, but I just, I can't apply liner with an angled liner brush. I have to use a pen, like a really small, precise pencil like this one. I just find it's much more accurate. Uh, but some people use these, whatever floats your boat, uh, whatever works for you. But I use these for eyebrow because I use it with a cream product. I use it with the Anastasia Dip Brow. That's that. That's so my other favorite brush, and this is the last one, is this is, I use this for a lip. This is a Sigma Lip L05, L05, and it's a travel one. 
and so it's great because you can fit it in your little makeup bag in your purse but you can also put it here and use it just as a regular brush like at home and I love the shape I have another lip brush this is a Sephora lip brush but they're very different shapes this is a Sigma one the Sigma one is more round but it has a great I don't know I just find that this one is almost a little too pointy um, I find it a little bit harder to get more coverage with the Sephora one but the Sigma one is, like, I've been using this like crazy since I bought it. Um, it is really great quality, um, highly recommend, and I really like the look and the feel of it. You can tell it's really sturdy. Um, so yeah, lip brushes. I think that's basically it. Um, I mean, if you were to invest in some brushes, make sure that you have a good, either you have a beauty blender or a foundation brush, you have an eyeshadow brush, you know, for putting, even if it's powder, you want something to put in there. Um, if you only use lipsticks in tube, like in tube format like this, you don't necessarily need to have a brush, but sometimes if I want to get really precise, I will use a brush. Like I'll, you know, take the brush and I'll just kind of go and take it off the lipstick and add it on. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you found this useful. So please leave me a comment below if you like, and please subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks. I love you so much. Okay.